She stole the show a couple of years ago in Bridesmaids, and now we find out if Melissa McCarthy has what it takes to headline a feature film. Hello there to everyone in cyberspace, and welcome back once again to the YouTube channels We Live Film and Real Screen Reviews. I am movie critic Nick Yakabuchi, and our next movie review is for the film Identity Thief. This film opened in wide release on Friday, February 8, 2013, and it stars Melissa McCarthy, Jason Bateman, John Cho, Amanda Peet, and John Favreau. This film comes to us from director Seth Gordon, and he is the previous filmmaker of Horrible Bosses, Four Christmases, and The King of Kong. This tale tells of a man named Sandy Bigelow Patterson and how he must head south to try and find someone that has obviously stolen his identity. This crook seems to be ruining his life and emptying his bank accounts all at the same time. Confronting this thief is only the start of this comedic adventure and will Sandy get back within the seven days he has to fix his life? Well, people, this is kind of odd because this movie for me really didn't work very well at all, but I assess very little blame for that to the two lead actors. Identity Thief was just like the very disappointing Green Lantern that also failed on many levels, but really wasn't the fault of lead actor Ryan Reynolds. Melissa McCarthy is solid in what she's trying to do in this movie, and she also proves that she can carry a film as its central character. The movie is always more about her than it is about him, but there are also so many moments where she is just so completely overwhelming that it works against the feature. She is funny, don't get me wrong, but I could easily see this character rubbing many people the wrong way. Now, I have said many times over the years that I love Jason Bateman, but unfortunately here he is simply the same old shtick. He bounces from scene to scene just trying to keep up with the tidal wave known as Melissa McCarthy, and how many times can you play this same character before it fails you at least once? Okay, getting into the guts of it, the script for Identity Thief never allows the characters nor the audience to ever breathe even once during this film. All it tried to do was blast the viewer with as many jokes as it could, and unfortunately the script doesn't accommodate the movie's tender moments, which few of them there even are. What I mean to say is that in the movie Midnight Run, you begin to care about these two guys because they begin to care about each other. And Identity Thief misses these characteristics, which are the best qualities of a buddy-buddy or road trip feature. The actual guts of the story is not only light, it's actually featherweight, and in my opinion, writer Craig Mazin still has quite a long way to go as a screenwriter. For me, however, the biggest disappointment comes from director Seth Gordon. He brought us the relentlessly funny Horrible Bosses, also with Bateman, and the wonderful documentary The King of Kong. He more than stumbles through this feature, however, and that's because the movie is aided by lackluster writing and an overpowering star. Director Gordon does not balance McCarthy off of Bateman, he doesn't balance the laughable humor against the uncomfortable moments, and most of all, he doesn't balance an obnoxious movie against any sort of charm. Okay, then there are a few things that I would also just like to address. How's about that there were hired killers that were in this movie as well as skip tracers? Yeah, I know, I was rolling my eyes too. These characters were only introduced into this movie so that an element of violence could also be added to the story. Also, speaking about secondary characters, none of them were memorable or even solid. Everyone but the two leads are just one-dimensional characters that show up not only where they're needed, but also when they're needed. Finally, the movie needed to be about 15 to 20 minutes shorter. Identity Thief is a bright and crisp movie that, on a whole, looks good even if the movie sports an overly long running time. There are some funny moments, but the Big Chuck romance might permanently scar the minds of the viewers. I know that it did me. However, the script just sucks with subplots that go nowhere, convenient time frames, and elements of the story that were just plain preposterous. I don't know what else to say except that I very much wanted to like this film, but this movie really didn't give you very much to like. Nick's Real Screen Review is another measly one and one half stars out of four, and that's for yet another Hollywood disappointment known as Identity Thief. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time that I have today, and thank you so much for stopping by. If you have enjoyed this review, please click like below and give me a thumbs up, or subscribe to either or both Real Screen Reviews or We Live Film if you haven't yet already. I'm sure that I'll be returning soon enough with more movie and trailer reviews, and until next time, this is Nick Yakabuchi saying, remember people, I'm not always right but only when it comes to the movies, and thank you for your attention.